All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're building the rear axles for the Tamiya Scania 770S. They're nice and straightforward, but there's a couple of little gotchas that might catch you out along the way. All right, we're up to bag C, which of course contains all the non plastic bits to make up and mount the axles. You've got the axle shafts, the diffs, springs, lots of nuts and bolts, some bushings, and interestingly, there's a few bearings too. We're going to be replacing the bushings with bearings, of course, but it's nice to see at least a few bearings in the kit. Right, step 11, spring seats and the mounts. We need four M3 by 14 step screws, 13 M3 nylon nuts, two top hat bushings, four suspension stays, four U-bolts, two spring seats, the long M3 by 100 millimeter screw, two leaf springs, and two F2s and two F8s to sandwich the springs. At each end of the leaf packs, we need to fit the stays, which is just a case of slotting the loops into the stays and using a step screw and a nylock nut. The only thing to keep in mind is we want both the step screws to be on the same way round. In the middle of the spring, we need the plastic parts F2 and F8. They have a curve molded in, so it's pretty obvious which way they need to go. Then we use the U-bolts over the plastic and we slot in a spring seat. While holding it all together, we can thread on the four nylock nuts. As usual, we'll leave the nuts a little bit loose so the spring can still move in its seat and centre itself. Later in the build, right near the end, we will nip them up, although it is a bit awkward even with a spanner. Complete both spring packs and we can mount them to the chassis. We need to pop in a top hat bushing into the hole in F2 with the flange outwards. Slide in the long screw and pass it all the way through the chassis and the cross cross member. And on the other side, we need the other spring pack and the bushing. Then we use a nylock nut to attach it. Now the nut doesn't need to be all that tight, just take up the slack plus a little bit extra. It can be quite difficult to feel when the nut's tight with the super long screw, so be careful. The two leaf springs should swing nice and freely. If they're binding, find out why before moving on. All right, step 12, the diffs. We need six M2 by five cappeds, four large washers, although I think I'd tend to call them shims, four large bevel gears, six small bevel gears, two star shafts, the two ring gears, and the two diff cases. Now on a six x four chassis, I tend to build with the standard Tamiya ceramic grease. However, if you're building a four x two chassis, you might want something a bit stickier to act a bit like a limited slip. There's so little suspension movement, the four x twos do struggle a bit with bumps in the road. Tamiya anti-wear or similar is a good place to start. Anyway, we have a 6x4, so the ceramic grease will work a treat. First, we need one of the large bevel gears, and we need to add some grease around the flat face. Then add a shim, and some more grease. Then the gear drops into the diff case. Next, we grab a star shaft, and one at a time, we add a little bit of grease to each of the shafts. Spin on one of the small gears to make sure the grease is inside the gear, and then repeat with the other two. Now we apply a generous amount of grease to the gear in the diff case, and we drop in the star shaft. Add some more grease between the gears, just for good measure. Pop the second large gear onto the small gears, and add some grease to the flat face. Add another shim, some more grease, and then we offer up the ring gear side of the diff case. Now, it might need a bit of a wiggle to get everything to line up. The important bit is not to force it. When everything aligns, it should just fall into place. Lastly, we add three of the screws. Now, it's all metal, so we can do the lazy thread lock method. We just add a smear to the screw thread and thread in the screw just until it stops. When all three are in, we can go around and nip them up properly. Don't go too crazy though, the metal the diff case is made from is really quite soft and it's not too difficult to strip out the holes. The second diff of course is exactly the same, so rinse and repeat and that's step 12 done. Step 13, axle housings and shafts. We need 11 4mm eclipse, 4 bearings and 10 bushings, but we'll just use 14 bearings from our bearing kit. 3 bevel gears with the shaft, two long and two short axle shafts, 
two A1 housings and an A3 housing. Okay, we'll start with the bevel gear, and unlike the manual, we really don't want to use any grease. The bearings will run nicely without, and adding grease will just drag things down. We just need to slide a bearing onto the shaft, poke it through from the inside of a housing, then from the outside slide in another bearing. Make sure both bearings are fully seated, you should be able to see the slot in the shaft on the outside just clear of the bearing. Lastly, we clip an e-clip into the slot. Repeat two more times and that's the axle housings ready for the next step. To get the shafts ready we need a couple of e-clips and bearings on each one. At one end we clip an e-clip into the slot, drop on two bearings and clip another e-clip at the other end. Repeat the other three shafts and they're ready to fit. But before we fit the shaft it's not a bad idea to grease up the splines. Not only does it make it a bit easier to get everything to line up, but in my experience it helps a bit with spline wear over a long period. On the side of the diff that sticks out, we want the shaft with the hole in the end. And on the flat side, we want the shaft with the pin. Again, we grease it up and stick it in. Both the shafts should go all the way in, so the E-clip is pretty much up against the diff housing. As with the other bits, repeat with the other diff and we're ready for the next step. Step 14, the centre axle. For this axle, we need an A1 and A3 housing. Now, if you check, A1 has a flange that fits over A3. If you have two A1s, they just won't fit properly. For screws and bits, we need eight M3 by 15s, two M2 by four grub screws, eight M3 play nuts, and two drive cups. Right, first we'll sort out the grubs and cups, partly so we don't lose them, and partly because it's a good place to start. We'll need to add a bit of thread lock to the grubs, as they do have a tendency to come loose. For now, we'll just use a smear of thread lock and thread the grubs in a couple of turns so we know they're safe. As long as we don't tighten them, the thread lock will keep while we sort out the rest of the axle. Starting with either half, we need to drop in a diff. It'll only fit properly one way round, so if it won't drop all the way in, you've probably got it backwards. We need to make sure the bearings are all the way out against the eclipse and that they're properly lined up with the bearing slots in the housing. Then we run some grease around the crown gear, spinning the diff so we have a nice amount over the teeth. As we're turning the diff, the grease will transfer to the small bevel gear and we'll feel it go from a bit notchy and sandy to silky smooth. Now we can offer up the other half of the housing and start fitting all the screws and nuts. One half has hex shaped holes for the nuts, so we just pop in a nut and thread in a screw from the other side. Initially, just take up the slack, then tighten them a little bit at a time until they're all nice and snug. It's also a good idea to thread lock these ones, but remember we're close to a lot of plastic, so we need to be careful not to let the thread lock get onto the plastic. The cocktail stick method works a treat, a little bit on the exposed threads, then loosen and retighten the screws to get the thread lock into the threads. For the drive cups, we just slide one over the bevel gear shaft, lining the grub up with the flat on the shaft. Make sure it's all the way on and we tighten up the grub. It's all steel, so we can do the grub up nice and tight. Generally, unless something goes catastrophically wrong, we should never need to remove them. Same goes, of course, with the other grub screw and cup, and that's one axle built. Step 15 and the rear axle, which is exactly the same as the middle one, except there's only one drive cup and we use an A2 axle housing instead of the A3. So here we are, one rear axle complete. Step 16, fitting the axles. Now there's quite a few bits for this one. We need eight M3 by 20s, four M3 by 18 step screws, four M3 by 14 step screws, four M3 nylock nuts, four M3 flange nuts, the short drive shaft, four damper mounts, the axles and the chassis. Then for plastic, when we get to them, we need the lower arms, which is two F6s and two F7s. Now before we start mounting things, we need to add a bit of thread lock to the threads in the axle mounts. It's going to be a bit tricky to get at them once the axles are on. We'll just smear some inside the threads and wipe off any excess. We'll be left with just enough to do the job. Next we can fit an axle, but we need to be very careful that we get them the right way up. Every so often on the forums you'll come across somebody whose truck spins the wheels but doesn't go anywhere. Quite simply, if an axle is up the wrong way, the wheels are going to go backwards. 
it's critical that we match the axles up with the diagram or we're going to be taking the suspension apart again to flip over the axle. Right, to mount we drop a couple of the screws into a damper mount, pass the screws through the axle and thread them onto the axle mount. Same goes for the other side, then we tighten up the screws. Now ideally we'd only tighten them once all the other bits are on to line everything up, but we're not going to be able to get to the screw heads, so we just have to tighten them now. The rear axle mounts in the same way, just keep an eye on which way up it is. For the lower arms there's two types, but don't worry too much about them. All we need to do is keep in mind that the end with the spacer mounts to the metal plate and we want the bend in the middle to be downwards. To fit them we use a step screw from the outside, through the end of the spacer, through the metal plate on the chassis and we use a flange nut to attach it. But as usual a bit of thread lock probably isn't a bad idea. Repeat the other three and we can attach the arms to the axle. Now the arms are a fairly tight fit in the mounts on the axle so we can line everything up before fitting the screws. As we bring the axles up we need to slot in the drive shaft between the axles. Being a bit careful we can spin the drive cup on the input end and check the direction of the axle spin. We want to see the ends where the wheels are going to go spin in the same direction. If they don't one of the axles is upside down. If it all looks good we can pop the short step screws in through the mounts and the arms and add M3 nylocks to the inside. Nip them up and that's the axles hung. Step 17 the rear dampers. Now this is a quick one. We just need four M3 by 15s, four M3 by 14 step screws, four M3 nylock nuts, four damper collars, four dampers and four F5 damper covers. Now before fitting the dampers we're going to add a bit of thread lock to the threaded holes in the chassis. It's another time for that cocktail stick and white method as the top covers are plastic. With the holes prepped we can take a damper and pop a collar into the top hole. Follow that with a screw through the small side of the collar then the thread goes through the plastic cover and we can offer it up to the chassis. The cover has a pin that lines up with a plain hole and the screw just threads straight into the threaded hole. Nip it up and that's the top done. At the bottom we slot the rod end into the mount on the axle and pop in a step screw from the outside with a nylock on the inside. Again nip it up and that's one damper mounted. Repeat three more times and that's bag C complete. Now right now the suspension is a little bit stiff. So off camera I loosened the four nuts on each side that clamp the leaf springs. Worked the suspension a little bit and then re-tightened. This allows the leaf springs to find just the right position and not bind up. A small 5.5mm spanner is quite handy for this, but you can do it with the spanner Tamiya provide in the kit. It's just a bit awkward and a bit tight on space. Next time we've got the 3 speed gearbox to build. It's going to be a fairly stock build with one big change involving the shift servo. Until then, as always, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!